If they come to this nation, they come to a nation that is God's nation. A nation where we can stand up and be a voice into their lives and see them changed. It's the only way that they'll be changed. Are you with me? Are we thinking as a nation? <clears throat> Are we thinking as a community, as Christians? I walked into an Islamic house on a job site and on their doorstep they had a, this Islamic prayer and then they had Islamic pictures all over the place consumed by the wrong fire it saddens me <clears throat> today there's the, we choose the wrong passions we have these fires in our hearts for the wrong passions where we put things like money Lust, uh, religions, belief systems, our tongues, self, all these things. These fires are trying to consume us and take us away from the Holy Spirit fire. Every day, there's something out there trying to draw us away from being a light for God. When I was driving here this morning, I felt the Holy Spirit showing me that some people are like a candle. They have this little flame. They have enough of Jesus and they walk around with this little flame every day and they say, I'm a light for Jesus. But there's just this little flame and not much else is happening. And there's those who are like a campfire where they gather people around them. There's just a little bit of fire showing in their life and people are drawing to it, but it's not quite big enough. And there's those who are captivated by the fire of the Holy Spirit in its completeness and are out there and they're like a bushfire and they're going through and consuming everything in its path. Which fire will we be? The candle, sit around the campfire and have a chin wag, or be the consuming fire that takes everything in its path? Which fire? We're challenged by this. I'm challenged by this. Which fire do we want to be? When we see this, these nations, when we see revival in these nations, we all reason it out and say, well, in this nation it cannot happen. Well, it can happen because it starts in us. Are you prepared this morning to not be hot and cold and say, Holy Spirit, let me be ablaze for you. Let me be on fire for you. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm getting free. Hallelujah. This morning. Hallelujah. The way that we can keep ourselves from being burned is in 1 Corinthians 3, 9 to 15, as we would build our foundation on Christ if we build our foundation on Christ, we will stop ourselves from being burnt. But we are building our foundations on other things at times. We are not allowing the intensity, the fierce heat of the Spirit of God to take hold of us and to quench the fires that are in our life. The choice is ours. Hellfire or holy fire. I love this quote. Blaze forth, holy fire. Leave me but one desire what is your desire on a daily basis blaze forth holy fire leave but one desire what desires do we have what desires do we follow what desires do we need to rethink Take the fires of passion, any passion, and only a higher passion can meet and master the lesser passion. Tim Elliott said this, we must be redeemed from fire by fire. Do we choose the fire that ravages or do we choose the fire that redeems? In Northern Ireland they say it is a race between Christianity and political ideology. But a flame of fire will win at the end of the day. The only way that hatred is ever truly quelled is by being engulfed in the fire of God's love. Hatred. Anger. All these things. 
that need to be engulfed by the fire of God's love. We lived in a mixed up and confused generation today. A generation that is lost. A generation today that does not have the fire of the Holy Spirit. I think sometimes we don't see that because of our lukewarmness. And I think as iron sharpens iron, so we should sharpen each other and say we need to get a light for God. Which fire are we choosing? The fire that ravages, or the fire that redeems. It's in this world. And we're caught between these two fires. Jesus wants us to be on fire for him. Who this morning could raise their hand and be honest with me this morning and said and wanted, would say that I want to be ablaze for Jesus Christ? Raise your hand this morning. I want you to come down this morning right now and I'm going to believe the Holy Spirit's going to ignite something in your heart this morning. I'm not just doing this for an old call. Just come down quickly. I'm not even going to lay hands on you. I'm going to pray that this fire is going to burn bright in your life. I'm telling you, I, I, I feel God... Uh, this message is not just for you, it's for me. I, I feel God's challenged me so much in this particular area because I know that my fire has dwindled. I, I've sometimes said up here that, you know, I used to be a raving evangelist. Well, you know, sure, God brings us to a place of maturity and he starts to teach us how to evangelize in a way that will bear fruit. But I don't want to lose that fire. I used to burn bright. I heard people used to say in the city, there's a guy that works up in this particular salon that is full of the Holy Ghost. I was a flame. I was a light. I'd walk in a room and people would get nervous. I'm serious. That's how on fire I was. Pastor Peter knew that. He came up and visited me. I was on fire. But I think some of us have lost our fire. I think some of us are just holding a candle. I think some of us are sitting around a campfire. I think some of us are saying, well, I need to make some changes in my life. Do you have things in your life, put up your hand and be honest, that needs to be burned out, burned away? Quenched, taken away, burned up by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray this morning and I'm going to believe for this. I'm not going to come and lay hands here. I just want you, all I want you to do is just look to Jesus right now and raise your hands up and, and say with all your heart, let's believe it. Let's ask for it. And I believe the Spirit of God will come and I believe he will ignite your heart and put you on fire for his glory. Amen. Amen. The question I have for you this morning, do you want to be full of fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost? Answer me, do you want to be on fire? Yes. If you can say that with conviction, the Holy Spirit will come and touch your lives this morning. Father, we come before you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am. You are God the consuming fire. And Father, I pray in my life and each of our lives here this morning, Father God, that we ask, Lord, to be a light for you, a blaze for you. Father, we don't want to be the candle. Father, we don't want to be the campfire. Father, we want to be on fire. We want to be a consuming fire. Father God, we want to be a blaze in our lives. Father God, living for you. I pray this morning, Father, those decisions that are made in the mighty name of Jesus, those areas of their lives, Father God, that need to be burned up. I I pray be burnt right now in the name of Jesus. Father, killed off their lives. Father God, I pray right now in your name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray this morning, Father God, that we will walk away this morning knowing that we have had an encounter with the living God. Holy Spirit, you live in us and you are with us. And I pray that rivers of living water will flow out of our bellies. Father, I pray that we will not stand for mediocrity. We will not stand for lukewarmness. We will not stand, Father, just to float along. We don't want to be hot and cold. We want to be on fire. Father God, for you. Oh, that's my prayer, Lord. And that's our prayer for us today, this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you.